Hey, it's Andrew Bocher with GY6 Vids. I'm back again with another full review video. This time, we have the Sig Sauer X10 10mm pistol. Let's take a peek. That fireball is a mwah. So first and foremost, before I start talking, the gun is empty, magazine is clear, there's no ammunition around the gun whatsoever. You're probably gonna notice that I have a lot of cold breath in the air right now. It is about mm, 20 degrees, 18 degrees, maybe even colder right now. I'm in my studio filming, and uh, there's not a lot of insulation. And when it's cold, it's cold in here too. I do have a little portable heater behind me, so I am uh, nice and toasty in all the places that I want to be warm. But I'm also wearing a very warm and comfortable and sexy black multicam hoodie brought to you by the sponsor of this video, rebelscreed.com. They're a patriotic apparel company. If you're into patriotic apparel and looking for a good company to stand behind, look no further. rebelscreed.com. Link will be in the description. Go check them out. All right, enough of that. Back into the review, let's start talking about this beast of a pistol. For those of you who don't know a lot about the 10 mil ammunition, 10 millimeter is got some serious ass behind it. If you know of the 40 Smith and Wesson round, also known as the 40 short and weak, <laughs> because what they did is they took a 10 millimeter casing, necked it down, and stuck the same size projectile into it, but with way less powder behind it, way less speed, way less everything. It's like taking a 68 Camaro and putting a four cylinder engine in it. Most people that want this gun are going to want it for shooting a big hairy monster that wants to eat them somewhere in the sticks. I don't want to be carrying a 9mm on me, and I also don't want to be carrying the giant 44 Magnum on me either. I want a full-size firearm that's going to be accurate, that can shoot hard cast ammunition, which you're going to want to use if you're going against, especially a bear. If you're going against a bear, you're going to want to use something that's going to get a ton of penetration. Don't use ammunition that you would use against personal defense situations. Against things in the forest, you want severe penetration to go through thick hide hair and get into vitals and bust up bone, because you want that thing that's trying to kill you to fall flat on its face within one or two rounds in its chest or in its head. You don't want things skipping off of skulls and bouncing around on the animal and not causing a lot of trauma or stopping too soon before it hits vitals. It's one thing to shoot at a human in a self-defense situation that has a little bit of clothing on it. It's a whole other ball game when you're shooting an adrenaline-filled forest monster with anything less than 10 mil or 44 mag or 454 casual or 500 magnum, you know, or 460. These are rounds you want to use against forest monsters. So Sig Sauer designed this for the outdoorsman. Yeah, it's a larger frame gun. Yeah, it's double stack. It holds 15 plus one rounds of 10 millimeter ammunition. It's not something you want to put in your pants on a daily basis is not designed for it either you got a five inch barrel that's a bull barrel that's designed for the hard cast ammunition a lot of 10 mil pistols right now in the market have barrels in them that technically aren't designed to fire many rounds of hard cast ammunition before you start tearing up that barrel a lot this barrel though is designed to shoot hard cast ammunition. It'll eat through hard cast and keep on trucking, and that's what you want. So when you hear people saying, ah, oh, it's bulky, it's, you know, it's front heavy, it's heavier than what I want, yeah, it's because it's not designed to be a day-to-day -day concealed carry firearm. It's meant to be something you put onto a chest rig or onto a hip holster while you're in the outdoors, and you have something you can immediately access and draw and deliver on target against something that's trying to kill you. It could be used as personal defense at your house, at your bedside because you're not carrying it around all day. I like having this thing near my bed because 10 mil kicks ass. It can sit near the bedside at a nightstand, be ready for that. But most of all, I carry it on my chest rig while I'm hunting. I'm out archery elk hunting. I have my bino harness on. This gun's right underneath of it into a holster and I can get to it very fast. It stayed on me all this last year while I was hunting, when I was archery elk hunting, when I was bear hunting, when I was hunting antelope, when I was hunting deer. It was on me consistently because I don't know what's coming. Even if it's a cougar, which is a thin-skinned animal, I still want to shoot it with something that's going to stop it fast. And other than 10 mil, most of the time you have to bring a revolver into the woods, which requires you to have only five to six rounds. That's not a lot of rounds to defend yourself with in a high-stress situation. You're going to be pulling your gun out real fast and most likely missing the first couple shots because your heart's going to be racing when you have this forest monster charging you. So to have a gun that has 10 mil but with 15 plus one rounds, 
gives you a lot of opportunity to stop the threat before it kills you. I recently got the Romeo 2 red dot as well, which it, this slide is designed for. It's got a removable plate and you can put that red dot on top and allows you to really get sighted in and have pure accuracy out of this thing. You'll see here in a second as we get into the video, it's designed as well to take the 10 millimeter ammo consistently without breaking is the 10 mil packs a wallop so out of the box this gun is not lightweight it's 33 ounces in overall weight dry no red dot no ammunition in the gun but when you top this thing off with standard 180 grain 10 mil ammunition 15 rounds in the magazine and one in the tube you're getting about 41 to 42 ounces of overall weight on this gun not including a red dot you might be putting on top of it so definitely not something lightweight but the extra weight 41 ounces, 42 ounces carrying around all day while hunting, I don't care. It's gonna be worth every single ounce to almost have a guarantee of defending your life if it ever came to it. So the overall length of this gun is 8.5 inches from beginning to end, decent length, but you have a 6.8 inch sight radius. So you have a long distance between the rear sight and the front sight, which gives you increased accuracy at longer ranges. And the 10 millimeter is very accurate out to long ranges. You can plink out to 100 yards fairly easy with this gun. The height of this gun from the top of the slide to the bottom of the magazine is 5.6 inches, and you have a five inch bull barrel inside this gun, like we talked about, which is designed to take hard cast ammunition. Out of the box though, there are three things that stood out to me about this firearm that made me go, ooh. Number one being that they have these amazing x-ray day and night sights having day and night sights is absolutely fantastic on any fire especially one that's can be used for personal defense in the woods i mean you don't always have light and sometimes when you do it's not a lot and they're easy to acquire i love the little u notch in the back but you still got the two white dots and you have your green up front easy to acquire easy to get on target i absolutely love them it stood out very quickly number two that stood out to me is the trigger holy bejesus I was expecting this to be kind of the typical lunky trigger. It's not. I'm not a big fan of the traditional 320 trigger. So I'm glad they put the X series trigger in this because I love it. It's got an angle to it. It's flat. They have an extended trigger guard, which is nice because you can get gloved hands into the trigger guard at any time very easily with having a lot of room up in front of the trigger. And this X series trigger is just great. Very little take up. It engages that sear very quickly. It stops and you have about four to four and a half pounds of trigger pull for it to break. So nice and easy. And it hits a wall. There's no over travel. The, the trigger doesn't go all the way to the back of the trigger guard. It just hits a wall. Nice and easy. Now that being said, let me reset the gun. The reset resets. It has the same take up. Clean, smooth break. And I've shot it already. It's, it's nice. I like it a lot. I'm so glad to have it in this gun. And the third thing that I noticed about this gun is the grip. When you put your hands around this, I got big mitts. I'm 6'3", 230 pounds. I got big hands. And even larger grips for me feel uncomfortable. It's kind of weird. It's not really ergonomic. But with the X10, this grip feels great. They have a fairly aggressive texturing on it. I think they could have went a little bit more aggressive with it because you're going to be using this in the outdoors. You want something that's going to be able to stick to your hand very well uh, when you are in wet or you know weird situation you may have blood in your hands after you know gutting something i personally am going to be adding an aftermarket press on reliable grip texture uh, while i'm shooting so you're going to see that here soon and not just for the x10 but many other guns as well so i'm going to leave a link in the description for the x10 grip texture and then potentially just an entire page of their texture grips as well so if you've been in the market for adding more grip to your ar pistol grips or whatever you want they most likely have it good company Go check it out. Links in the description if you're in the market for that. So they probably could have gone a little bit more aggressive in my opinion, but it does feel good and it fits your hand very well. It's not too fat. It's not too wide at the dimensions of the base of the magazine area. You usually you get a kind of a cumbersome feel or it's too thin and you don't feel like you're in control of the gun. This just feels right. They have an extension on the beaver tail on the back of the gun as well, which gives you good purchase on the firearm. And when that heavier recoil, the 10 mil goes off, that beaver tail helps you to get back on the target for follow-up shots and helps you minimize and control overall recoil, which is great. That being said, going further into the grip, they do have also an undercut under the trigger guard. Most of the time you have to send a frame off to a stippling company or somebody who does modifications to frames to get undercuts. This has a built-in undercut under the trigger guard, which allows you to get your hand on the gun, get high up on that grip, get a good purchase on the back of the gun, get your hand high up on that beaver tail, 
and being able to press out on target and feel in control of a gun that's pumping out some serious power. But it does have a high bore axis. I wish they would have had it a little bit lower, but you know, with a big frame gun shooting a big old bullet, it's probably hard pressed to get it any lower than it is right now. But if they could, it'd be great. Now, moving on to the controls of the firearm, this does have ambidextrous slide catch levers, both on the left and right hand side. Also on controls, your magazine release is reversible. So you can pop that magazine release out like a lot of guns have nowadays and put it on the opposite side if you are a left-handed shooter and you want to use your thumb. And you have your removable top plate on your slide. So you have your optics ready slide. The Romeo 2 is a tank of a red dot and it has a self-contained armor system that protects the entire red dot from moisture and debris and it has a metal shroud that prevents it from being broken if you were to drop it and on a gun that's designed to be in the outdoors that's good to have all right explosion time Uh, it just bent it completely sideways. Add that to the resume. Andrew Bocher, bender of shepherd's hooks. That doesn't sound right. Andrew Bocher, destroyer of hooks. No. Andrew Bocher, hooker killer. <laughs> so this gun's supposed to defend you out in the wild against big, hairy, badass creatures. So the last thing you want to happen is the gun to jam or malfunction or have an issue. So I'm gonna shoot 300 rounds of 10 millimeter ammunition back to back to back to back at these steel targets down at 21 feet. Now, I'm not looking to be precise. I'm not looking to be completely accurate. I'm looking to rip off rounds fast and see if there's any malfunctions in the gun. I am gonna be shooting the first mag full of Buffalo Boar ammunition. This is hard cast ammunition, and it's coming out at 1,200 feet per second. So only about 50 feet per second less than the standard ball ammunition we're shooting right now but it's 40 grains heavier. So this thing is kicking some serious ass down range. If you're looking to stop something that's big, hairy, has claws and teeth, Buffalo bore ammunition is definitely one of my go-tos. Against a two-legged threat, obviously shooting hollow points would be best because it's gonna expand and dump all that kinetic energy into the target. But with a big, hairy beast, you want penetration to go all the way through that animal and get into the vitals, go through its skull, go through its chest, go through all the bones, all the muscle mass, the thick hide. So. Buffalo Boar is where it's at. I want to say a big shout out to Buffalo Boar. They did send out ammunition for this video, so they're not sponsors or anything like that, but they definitely wanted to be a part of it. Uh, the owner of the company is fantastic. He has a ton of experience with stopping giant animals with good ammunition, and that's why he runs one of the best hard cast and defense hunting ammunition on the market. So go check them out, Buffalo Boar, uh, in the ballistics gel test I most likely will be doing for this gun and 10 mil ammo. I most likely will be testing out some of their ammunition and I might even have them on the show, so we'll see. Gun is clear, but I wanna show you the issue that I've been having. The main issue I have with this gun is the magazines, yes, they hold 15 and plus one in the chamber, but the 15th round on ball ammunition is very, very hard to get in. But with hollow points or hard cast, it's real tricky, real tricky to get that 15th round in. So I'm having issues with the mags being consistent with taking the 15th round. And then the follow-up thing that goes with it, it's really hard to get that mag to seat in the gun with 15. So Sig, if you're listening, which I'm pretty sure you are, you gotta figure out these mags because you gotta hammer them on home to get that thing to seat. And once you try to chamber that round in, it's a little tricky to get that slide to work, but it does seat the round. It's just, you have to let it really go. You can't ride that slide. But that's the only consistent thing I've had issues with with this gun. So Sig, pay attention, please. It's the only thing you need to fix. This thing's a beast otherwise. Let's shoot these hard cast ammo down at the targets. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a little bit more of a punch, but not by much, but you're getting 40 more grains with only 50 feet per second less. So I'll take it. Shoot the plate rack. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Oh, oh, come on. Jeez, the ways. <laughs> it packs a punch. It's knocking the steel to the side and blowing the other one back over. I've shot other 10 mils with this exact same ammo and it, you don't want to shoot more than a mag, it just takes its toll. But this gun does have extra weight on the front of the slide. It does feel pretty heavy on the front. And when you're done shooting, after a round goes off, your follow-up shot, you feel like you dip down and have to come back up. So it's not a 
it's not a pro, but it's not a con. It's just because the extra weight in the front to help mitigate recoil pulls that barrel down and kind of dips you. So let's keep shooting. Jeez Louise. <laughs> oh my God. Packs a wallop. Ah, come on. Oh. Definitely uh, have some trigger flinch. I'm just bucking this gun, <laughs> especially with that extra little bit of oomph coming out of that. So it handles hard cast ammunition perfectly. Now, other guns will shoot hard cast ammunition, but they're not designed to shoot it. With this gun, it is designed to shoot hard cast. The barrel is designed to be able to handle hard cast ammunition for long periods of time. It's awesome. And a lot of people think hard cast is just lead ammunition. It's not, it's not just lead ammunition. It's a much different design, a much different process making it. And uh, they're beasts of rounds if you want extreme penetration and stop big hairy beasts. Now that that mag's done, let's get into that 300 rounds in a row situation. My wrist is gonna be feeling at the end of the day, but <laughs> see if there's any issues whatsoever. We're going back to the FMJs, which are 180 grains and 1250 feet per second. So 40 grains less and only 50 feet per second more, so a lot lighter on the wrist. Let's see if it has an issue. Yep. See, you gotta hit it pretty hard to send that thing home. All right, back onto the steel on the right. Whew, 15 down, next mag in. Obviously, I'm gonna speed up some of these shots. I'm sure all you guys, now when the slide's back, Mag goes in easy. Slide back, no problem. But when the slide's down and you try to feed a full mag in it, it has an issue. Whew. Second mag, third mag, back on target. Whew. This is uh, riding that slide. I got my hands way up here, the big old mitts, and. I'm notorious for riding slides, so I can never say, oh, the gun didn't lock back because I'm always doing that crap. So third mag, let me load up four more magazines of 15 in each one, and we'll keep ripping out this ammo. So far, so good. Between B-roll and all this, I'm shooting well over 500 rounds out of this gun just in a couple days. It takes a whole lot of time. So if you guys appreciate the quality, what you're watching, rather than just being a tabletop review or just having a cell phone rolling or some crappy camera with no good focus pulls, no B-roll, no slow-mo. Share the content with somebody else. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Subscribe. All those good things. All those good things. If not, I whatever. I'm still going to do it, but it's just nice to have the feedback. So let me know. Ah, uh, come on. Ah, son of a, oh, <laughs> pisses me off so bad. <laughs> oh man, it's, <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's one thing to mess up on the range by yourself, but when you're having thousands and thousands of people watching, it hurts. <laughs> Whew. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, it'll get you, mag out. The mags do drop free, by the way. These, um, they don't stick. They're not sticky at all. I'm, I'm loving the fact that they're not sticking because if you need to exchange magazines quick in the heat of the moment uh, for what this gun's meant for, you don't want a sticky mag having to rip that out. Back on steel. Whew. Getting better with that trigger flinch. Mag out. Mag in. This will be mag eight. Mag 8, good to go. So far, no problems. 10 mil is basically equivalent to 357 Magnum in overall performance and power. So if you want to compare it to anything, compare it to a 357 Magnum. Ah, oh, come on. Getting better, getting better, little by little. Whew. Magazine out, magazine in. Mag out, mag in, back on the target. Whew. Yep, trying to keep my thumb down. 
Slide stays back. Mag 12. Back onto the dueling tree. Ah! Come on. Ah! <laughs> Frustrating. <laughs> Four more mags. It's slinging the brass a decent ways away. I'm looking at almost six or seven yards away, the brass is being flung. Most guns fling ammo like a couple feet in front of you. I see about 21 feet away, just tons of brass. It's pretty consistent though. It's landing in a perfect arc. It's not like they're behind me or not in front of me. So that's saying something about consistent extraction. And it's definitely ripping that round out and like, get the hell out of here. Mag, mag out, mag in. Ooh, I hit the slide release. That first of oh, that 15 round really tight mag, it does have an issue if you use that slide release. I highly recommend just racking that slide and power stroking it that way, sending that round into the tube. Back on the main steel. Whew. Once again, not looking for extreme accuracy on that, just looking for fast rounds out of the gun and see if there's any issues. Okay, mag out, mag in, power stroke slide. Woo. Mag out, mag 16. Come on, there, stay over, stay over, stay over. All right, now let's run it from the top down. All right, cut away. Four more mags to load up. Whew. Definitely let your wrist know it's working. Okay. Okay. I get so excited thinking I'm doing okay, then it just doesn't work. Okay. Hmm. Okay, getting a little bit better. Okay, it's ready for the next mag. <laughs> Let's see if I can go through it. Back on the main steel. <laughs> riding the slide. Yep, riding the slide. Mag is out. Next mag in. Get in there, get in there. Yeah, it's, that magazine issues the only thing I can see on this gun that's having consistent problems. It's just, it's very tight to get that 15th round in and it's pain in the ass to get that mag into the gun at that point. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come on. <laughs> Oh, 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 I hate it so much. <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys are laughing. The dueling tree, I absolutely love. I'm usually really proficient with it and I'm, I'm great with it with nine mil, but with 10 mil, you, your finger starts getting like this, like, ah, like it's just, ah, doesn't want to pull the trigger anymore. It just gets starting to get tired and a little, Oh, what we have here is a failure to feed. I was trying to pull that trigger as fast as I possibly could there at the last second, if you probably heard that, and we have a failure to feed. I'll be cutting away to B-roll footage right now so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's get the mag out, see what happens. So it was the last round in the magazine. Magazine, let's hold on to that for right now. Yeah, it's just, just didn't want to feed that round. Slide stays back, wasn't the round, so that's just bah, 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 as fast as you possibly can. That slide's doing its thing, and it tried to send that last round home, and it just, whoop, almost vertical. Let me know what you guys want me to review. Let me know what you want to see. What do you want to see? Ballistic gel tests? Do you want to see full reviews of certain guns? Do you want to see anything? Just let me know. Comment section is a great place to let me know things, ask questions, demand things, ask for things politely. 
say thank you and please. No, it doesn't matter. You can be like, hey, bitch, make me that video. <laughs> Great, now the comment section is gonna be full of, bitch, make me this video. <laughs> okay. 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 Ah! Oh! <laughs> no! 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 Why is the bottom one my worst? I'm just gonna shoot that target. Uh, the competitiveness in me is just very upset right now that especially the bottom one was just the one that was just like, ha ha ha, trick or treat. Oh, oh. So back to the main point, back to reviewing, back to details. Out of that 315 rounds in a row, we only had one issue, one failure to feed, that weird almost straight vertical round in the gun or coming out of the mag, not being able to be fed into the barrel. That was with me ripping the rounds off real fast. So I'm gonna load up two more magazines and I'm gonna rip off as fast as I possibly can, not giving a crap about accuracy whatsoever and see if it happens again. If it doesn't, we can call it a one-off. If it does, something to pay attention to. And obviously the consistency with the 15th round of the gun, 14, totally fine. Gun accepts the magazine easily, slide goes home easily, it's perfect. 15th round, it's like it's almost not even designed to have 15 rounds. Whew. Magazine out, magazine in, power stroke, fast as I can. Whew. Yeah, the gun rips. Didn't happen again, so it may have been a one-off. I can't throw the baby out with the bathwater like I've said before. These reviews are of a gun I'm shooting in my hand at the time. So just because this gun has one issue or doesn't have any issues potentially, doesn't mean every X10 that's out there that's being made by SIG is gonna be flawless or perfect. It, it takes a community in the gun industry to review guns, to be in forums, to be in comment sections on full review videos, letting people know what you found with the particular gun you have. They're making thousands of these things, thousands and thousands and thousands of these things. So for me to say my review of this gun is the end all be all going, yep, because this gun worked perfectly for me, it means all of them are perfect. No, but from what I'm seeing out of the gun I have, so far this thing is kicking some serious ass and I'm loving it. All right, after that disaster of a dueling tree, let's move into accuracy with this gun. Let me throw the red dot onto it and see how accurate this gun truly is while holding still with a red dot and slowing down and letting my hand rest a little bit. <laughs> and then let's see how accurate it is. We'll see right now. It's got the Romeo 2 red dot on here. This slide is pre-cut out for this red dot. Once I impact, I'm gonna be aiming for that same impact again and again and again and see where the group lines up. Got 15 rounds, we're gonna use all 15 of them. Top of the A zone, that line right there. We're gonna aim for the dead center of that and uh, see where the groups start lining up. Okay, sitting a little bit low, but not too bad. I like it. Up, oh, pulled that one. Even being a person who knowingly isn't great with red dots on a pistol, that group I'll take. I had one flyer low and a little bit of a flyer to the right. All right. Time for a little bit of motion activated randomization. If you haven't checked out my 2A product reviews, go check them out. It's a playlist here on my channel, at GY6Vids. I just pretty much take a quick, no BS, no cinematic drama, just straight look at cool products in the 2A community. This is one of them I recently did. There's no targets to engage. I'm gonna go to a low ready, and then when there's targets to engage, I'll come up and shoot. Two shots, I pulled left. Come on, baby, where you at? Where you at? Oh. Ah, I missed that one, son of a gun. Come on. Got the heart and the lung already. Come on, baby, who's next? Trying to get two shots off. Come on, where you at? Let's go for a headshot. Oh, I missed left. Son of a gun. Oh, that one was about neck level. Ah, <laughs> come on. Ah. 
This is good practice for this larger caliber pistol. It allows me to uh, see where my, inst ah, see, trigger flinch. So good training tool. It puts you on the pace that's a little bit different than normal. And it's not just a stationary target. So this is the first time I'm ever doing this with this gun. 10 mil is a, uh, it's a big boy. There's that mag again. Let's do it again. See if I can control myself and slow down a little bit and practice. Let's go for center of chest. Come on, where are you at? Two shots there. Where are you at? Come on. Better. Still all over the place. Come on, where are you at? Where are you at? Come on. Come on. Ah, oh, trigger flinch again. Son of a. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, guys. Practice, practice, practice. This is going to be a good drill for me to practice on with this gun because this is the gun I'm using for my bino harness chest rig when I'm hunting. That way, when there's any big, hairy monsters in the forest that want to kill me, I can kill them back. Okay, so you got the manual mode on now. That target over here. I can definitely tell there's a, I'm pulling left. I still got a decent group there. There's some decent shots in the, the heart and the lungs and the neck region. Then one off target to the left of his right ear. And then on this one, I have consistent shots just left of the head. So I know that's my issue, but I got some good shots on the chest, a little sporadic. These are quick shots, but it's fun. It gets the, it gets the heart pumping. Definitely go check out these target systems. Links in the description for that video of the quick little review of these products. Oh boy. So obviously it's been another day. It snowed like crazy a couple days ago and I'm constantly filming right now. I'm out filming another video. That being said, I hate being bad at certain things. I hate not being able to improve in the moment on certain things. And that dueling tree truly <laughs> pissed me off. So I put the Romeo 2 red dot back onto the X10 because that was the most accurate. So I was like, why the hell am I missing the dueling tree? Well, I put a paper target up and I shot with the iron sights and I am hitting with my point of aim on the iron sights slightly left. Obviously the low and high is me dipping the gun, it's me jerking the trigger. It's not a huge deal, it's not a giant problem, it's not off by a lot, but it was off by probably an inch or two of where I was wanting to aim. You can just take an iron sight tool and just move your front sight left or right or your back iron sight left or right and adjust your point of aim from there. So enough talking, let's start shooting and see if I can clear that dueling tree real fast and make up for my, <laughs> my shame. <laughs> All right, let's get the top two over to the right side real quick. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I can already tell this is impacting <laughs> where I want to pull the trigger at. Hey. Dude, two in a row. I'll take it. I got to come out and practice this more often. Three in a row. All right. Mm. Yeah, the uh, X10 with the Romeo 2 on top, it's cherry. Hey, 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 there's four. All right. All right. Ah, oh, just low. Hey, I'll take four in a row. So I'm glad I came out and filmed a little bit more for this video because I didn't want the gun to seem like it's not accurate. I had to check it and I did. It's shooting slightly left with the iron sights. Not by much. So in the defensive situation that I'm using it for, I'm going to be gah, 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 gah. it's not going to be looking for any <laughs> dead on accuracy. It's looking for face and chest. Um, so I'm not going to be worrying about bumping my sights around too much, but it is off by a little bit. So if you have this gun and you're shooting slightly left or right, or you're, you're getting a little frustrated, check your iron sights, check your groups, see where you need to bump those sights around accordingly. Shooting dueling trees so I don't suck. Practice. Oh, two for one. Yeah. I'm starting to starting to like red dots. Oh, out of ammo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, me likey. Ah, I ran out of ammo. 
yeah, I'm liking red dots. I gotta practice more. This thing is a absolute beast. The 15 plus one magazine should technically be a 14 plus one magazine. I'm putting 14 rounds into my magazines now. I don't even try to do the 15th round. I'd rather have the consistency of the 14 plus one rather than trying to make it one more round and make it cumbersome for me. The gun is fantastic. I absolutely love it. All right, bye. <laughs> Yeah, you have a suppressed 50 cal desert eagle.